The goal is to find the area of one region bounded by r squared equals cosine of 2 theta. Now in order to get our limits of integration, it might be nice to plot this. And this particular plotter wants it given as a function, so I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides and plot the square root of cosine of 2x. So you can see its input here. Now watch what happens as I increase theta. We begin to get the beginning of our graph. Now, because of the square root, there are going to be some inputs that don't yield an output, which happens here. But if I keep tracing, we do eventually see the form of our entire graph. So that's what is enclosed by r squared equals cosine of 2 theta. But as we look for our limits, let's back up, because we see a lot of symmetry there. Notice right here, we get a quarter of the total shape. If you look at where that hits, that hits at pi over 4. So it turns out what we'll do is we'll do the integral from 0 to pi over 4 and then just multiply our integrand by 4. So let's go ahead and now calculate our integral. And we're going to look at the integral from 0 to pi over 4. And remember that just as a reminder, to get the area of a polar curve, we're looking at the integral from alpha to beta of 1 half r squared d theta. So our limits are 0 to pi over 4, which we saw from the curve. We're going to have the 1 half as part of the formula in there. Now we're going to take the square root of cosine of 2 theta but we're immediately going to square it, which actually makes our computation quite a bit easier. So we have the integral from 0 to 4, and we're going to multiply it, sorry, we're going to multiply this by 4 to account for the fact that we're only finding a fourth here. So the 1 fourth, the 1 half and the 4 will leave us with a 2 out front. And we have the integral of cosine. This have a small error there, that should be pi over 4, cosine of 2 theta d theta. So we have the 2 out front. The antiderivative of cosine 2 theta, that's sine of 2 theta over 2, and we're going from 0 to pi over 4. And now those twos cancel, and we end up with sine of 2 times pi over 4 minus sine of 2 times 0. 2 times 0 is 0, sine of 0 is 0. This is going to be sine of pi over 2 which is 1, and there's our final answer.